I've been working in and studying the Stonehenge landscape now for about 37 years. And over that time, I've seen quite a lot of significant changes. The whole landscape was designated as a World Heritage Site over 30 years ago in recognition of its universal importance. This is something that is important for the whole world. And there have also been changes in the way that the landscape has been looked after. Areas of trees have been cut down, some areas have been taken out of cultivation and put down to grass again, all to improve the way in which we look after this landscape. And of course, one of the biggest improvements that's taken place recently was when the old and inadequate visitor centre facilities were moved away from the stones and the road that ran right past Stonehenge was closed. So these are all very positive things that have happened. But now there are plans for the A303, that major road that carves through the middle of this World Heritage Site. And this is where I wanted to explain my views about this, because the road is a problem. There's no doubt about that. If you drive down from London, the first bit of single carriageway road you get to is when you reach Stonehenge. And at weekends and bank holidays, it's a traffic jam. There have been suggestions about just turning it into a dual carriageway. That's not going to happen because of the significance of this area. Likewise, what's described as a cut and cover tunnel where you dig a big trench and put a lid over it that's not going to work either. So we're down to a bored tunnel, something that digs under the archaeology, which is a great idea. But there are some big problems with the scheme that's suggested at the moment. Firstly, it's the way the whole landscape is being looked at, because it should be looked at as the fact that this is a World Heritage Site and you've got to find a way of dealing with it properly, not just as a transport scheme with a bit of heritage thrown into it. The other is that the tunnel that's suggested is simply too short and it's in the wrong place. We've got 2.9 kilometres of tunnel proposed for here, but it's a question of where it goes in and where it comes out that's the problem. To the east, over beyond Stonehenge, I don't have too much of a problem there because it's going in quite close to where the current dual carriageway is. It's at this end, the west, that I and other professional archaeologists have a bit of a problem in fact a major problem because the portal for the tunnel as it stands at the moment is going to come out here at this very spot where these trenches have been dug to assess the significance of the archaeology and this to me is a complete disaster. As I've said the problem is the tunnel's too short but recently it's been moved further east to enable the avenue, the ceremonial approach to Stonehenge, to be reconnected, which is a great idea. But in moving it east, it's pulled it further into the World Heritage Site on this side. And also, the thing that I think is completely wrong, it's been moved further south. Originally, it was due to come out somewhere close to the woods on the skyline over there, which is quite close to a Barrow Cemetery called Winterbourne Stoke. But Ostensibly to improve the setting of Winterbourne Stoke, it's been moved down here to the south. Now, I don't think you can do much about improving the setting of Winterbourne Stoke because there will always be a main road running right by the side of it. It's the road to the Stonehenge Visitor Centre. And you can also see the car park of the Stonehenge Visitor Centre from that Barrow Cemetery. So its setting is not perfect and moving the road away isn't going to turn it back to something pristine. Bringing the road portal here is coming right into the heart of an essentially unspoilt and incredibly significant area. The closest, one of the closest barrows that I can see from here, the one with the bush on it just over there, that's Bush Barrow. That is arguably the single most important barrow in the country produced an incredible grave group of gold objects in 1808 that can still be seen in the Wiltshire Museum at Devizes. And that is just part of an incredible cemetery, the Normanton Down Cemetery, some of which is in the wood here, where we're clearing scrub off a barrow today in the snow. More barrows beyond that, another barrow just down there. So this portal is coming out effectively in the middle of this barrow cemetery. It's also going to completely obliterate the setting of the lake barrows which lie in the woods up there. It's just, uh, it's almost difficult to describe the impact that effectively a motorway coming out at this point is going to have. So from here to the edge of the World Heritage Site, which lies quite some distance in that direction, you're going to have a major dual carriageway. 
And ironically as well, the lights, the headlights of those cars coming in this direction in the dark, in the middle of the winter, are going to shine straight at Stonehenge. They're going to ruin the sight line of the winter solstice, the time when the sun sets in the winter, which is the single most important day of the year at Stonehenge. So this is why I am objecting really strongly to this, to the fact that the portal, the Western portal, is going to come out at this point. I hope I've managed to explain my argument in a way that you can understand. And what I would urge people to do is to actually look at the consultation documents and actually, if you agree with me, and you agree with my rather passionate views, then register your objections as well. I think if we let this happen, if this portal comes out here, then future generations are going to look at us and go, what were you thinking at that time? What have you done to this absolutely incredible landscape? <laughs>